It's too big. It's too massive. Okay. You need to bring him back. What's going on, arm wrestling world? It's now a month away from the biggest arm wrestling match of all time. Devin Larratt versus Levon Sagnishvili. The two behemoths of our sport currently go head to head again in the rematch. But first, who am I? I'm Harmison. I edit videos for this guy. You might recognize him. Go give him a sub. All right, back to the big rematch. First, we need to go back and talk about what we know about their first match until now. In round one, people thought that Devin had something here, including Devin himself. I was going to win last time and you know it, Levon. But we'll never know. Levon straight up tore Devin's bicep. And credit to Levon, honestly, you have to be insanely strong to be able to tear Devin Laird's bicep. But what's different going into the rematch? Well, inactivity, for one. Because this is how many times Levon has pulled since the Devon match. One time. There's a good reason though, Levon had a very serious wrist injury while training last year. It's actually so much worse with the sound on, I'll link that in the description if you want to watch it. Devon's time since their match has looked dramatically different. These are Devon's credited matches since pulling Levon. Yeah, there's 17. I had to count it like five times. And I just want to focus on these matches specifically because these are the right arm. And his one loss on the right happens to be from this guy. But I'll touch on that in a bit. Now, as a Canadian and a longtime fan of Devin's career, this match was very strange going in. It was really the first time seeing Devin come off a big injury, and given that it was just under 150 days away from the injury, I think people just didn't know at this time what to expect. Unless, of course, you believe this practice pull meant something. I'm a big fan of both pullers, and I know that they're both kind of trolls. Are you afraid, Devin? So practice pull from either of these guys is hard to trust. And Prudnik is no slouch, and he was the heavyweight champ at that class for a reason. He just probably shouldn't have done this. Because Devin always avenges his brother. Bro, Did you fart, Prudnik? Bro. Look at this stink. Talking here, fight trying me, to get Prudnik. right into their same fight. fight. So, spoilers, Devin won. And it was incredibly impressive at the time, coming off a bicep tear injury not that long before. And this is where I probably should mention stem cells. If you go back to last year, I'm a different athlete now. Now, I'm not a scientist, so I'm not going to get into this subject, but it does appear that the stem cells have helped Devin quite a bit. The next match was against Sanders Shetties, and I like Sanders a lot. I just think this was probably a mismatch at the time. This was right when Devin was going after all the Europeans. One by one, the Europeans will fall. So yeah, Devin won, but Sanders is a good sport though. Finally, we get to Gennady. And if you don't know who Gennady is, he's a bad, bad dude. Ironically enough, Gennady actually used to give Levon a lot of problems early in his career. And problems, he definitely gave Devin. But in Devin's own words, this loss was great for him. Lots of inside work. And I still, I still am. I'm doing lots of inside work. Gennady showed him weaknesses to work on. There's not many people in the world that can say they beat both Levon and Devin Laird. And there was some controversy regarding the refing in this match, but I'm not going to cover that. They were about to have their rematch, and then this happened. Uh, Gennady Kvikfenia apparently has blown his bicep. Devin's next big match was a rematch against Dave Chafee. And Dave was just not in great shape at this time. And I'm not trying to make excuses, but he had lost four of his last five matches before this one. Is that all you got already? Oh my, oh my. Yeah, it was not pretty. If you lose round one to Devin Larratt, it's probably going to be a long night. And then there was the Ryan SB drama. And let me just say this real quick. Devin just wins this really fast. It's a single round. And this also had a lot of drama in it, and you can look this up if you want to, it's the ethics board drama with Ryan SB. Because as far as I know, they're all good now. At this point, Hermes was looking like an absolute killer. He had just had a pretty one-sided victory against Jerry Cataract for the title, and he took the first two rounds of Levon's professional career and forced Levon to bring out the oxygen tanks. And this one was unexpected. It seemed like Devin was just in Hermes' head. From the beginning, too. Uh, You're stronger than me by, like, five times stronger than uh, me. It was a super impressive win for Devin, and it was super cool seeing John Brzezink at the end give him the belt. Now this was a very hyped up match, and that match I've been wanting to see for a very long time. And this one had a lot of bad blood. I hate him. I hate this guy. 
Yeah, this one had a lot of tension, especially with Babkin. You could feel it through the screen. And you could really tell just how much it meant to Devin and everyone around him. Now on to Georgie. It's okay, pepperoni. <laughs> <laughs> now Georgie is very strong. He might even be top three in the world. He's got a crazy hand and an amazing top roll. However, he just ran into Devin. And Devin's just a terrible matchup for him. He's got very long leverage, he's got that king's move, and as Gennady showed, you need a press. Final score was 6-0 for Devin Laird. Now, what Devin Laird is doing at almost 49 years of age is nothing short of incredible. If Devin beats Levon, it would be one of the craziest sports achievements I've ever seen, and I've watched a lot of sports. That being said, if Levon wins, it will be a huge achievement for him as well. With the amount of time Levon has had off, and with the injury he had, Coming back and beating someone like Devin on your first match back, that would just be incredible. If you don't know Levon's career up to this point, he's undefeated in his professional career. He only has those two round losses to Ermies. The guy has never actually been pinned yet. So, to quickly summarize, Devin is 7-1 with his right hand in the time since the first match with Levon. He has 30 pins for him and two against and those two were both from Gennady. He beat Ermi's Gasparini, Denis Saplenkov, then Georgi Svetkov, all of which were in the top six. And to top it all off, he became the super heavyweight champion of East vs. West, and he retained it versus Denis Saplenkov. He has only been pinned by Gennady and Levon since 2019 on the right hand. And that was to Dave Chafee. Now, I run community polls every day on my YouTube channel. If you're interested, you can go to the community tab and check it out. But every once in a while, I do throw out the question of who do you think is going to win out of Devin and Levon. And to be honest, the polls are uh, quite shocking sometimes. And I just got to mention this shutout stake. I do find it just a little bit humorous. I feel like when Devin has to win one round before Levon has to win four, the shutout stake just kind of means who's going to win because we kind of know that Levon has to win the first four rounds to win the match. And if Devin wins one of those rounds, there's a good chance Devin might just win. So I just find I find it just a little bit funny that the shutout stake is set up like this. And one last thing, I am going to make a playlist for this video and it's just going to be all the official matches um, that were talked about in this video. Maybe the left-handed ones too. You could be new to this sport or you could just want to rewatch all the matches just to get yourself caught up. Either way, it will be there. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.